Uh, my name is Christopher Height, and I'd like to review this book entitled Global Democracy, The Case for a World Government. Um, it was written by a Swedish professor named um, Torbjorn Tongsjo. I checked this book out from the library at Colorado State, so, but I would highly recommend purchasing this book because the proceeds from the sales of this book go to Oxfam. Basically, he builds a case for uh, implementing global democracy now because of the, the timing uh, being good. Um, he builds it in uh, three kind of arguments. Three, there's three pillars to his argument, and these are peace, justice, and environment. The best books that I've read have been structured this way, you know, with an intro, and then three pillars, books like John McPhee's Encounters with the Archdruid. It's a very you know, appropriate book to be talking about along with this because basically he's making the case that um, finite natural resources are, in, are the source of wars and uh, that international peace, justice, and care for the environment are going to require that we have some kind of cooperative central government on planet Earth. Well, let me take you through some of the highlights while I was reading it. In the first third, when he talks about peace, he's basically analyzing the wars during the past few centuries and the incidents of wars amongst democratic nation states versus non democratic nations, and then non democratic versus non democratic, democratic versus democratic, etc., etc. He's basically showing you that by having a global democracy, you would have a monopoly on violence because you would have the world. Um, the, the respected world court to answer to if your country engaged in war and specifically says that in a, a world democracy a preemptive instigation would not be tolerable and the, you know the only tolerable aggression would be defense. So he moves from peace to justice. Now it's kind of hard for me to understand that transition so justice he's basically speaking like Thomas Paine wrote a pamphlet called Agrarian Justice basically making the proviso that inherently the way that natural resources are distributed throughout the planet, that there is an inherent um, unfairness or unjust distribution of natural resources throughout the planet. And that, um, and actually it's, he mentions not Thomas Paine, but John Locke. John Locke having the proviso that in a just society, people should not have their situation worsened by the acquisition of natural resources. So if a corporation from the UK wanted to go and mine, um, say, Bolivian lithium, uh, the people in Bolivia would be justly compensated for that. So that's the, the moral rights um, argument. Now we've gone through peace, justice, and then the next chapter is environment. He talks about the environment in pretty specific terms. At one point he appeals to this um, Guardian article published October 31st, 2006, where they talk about giving every citizen of the world an annual quota of uh, carbon credits, and then um, you know basically having every citizen doled out or rationed uh, carbon credits, and then um, having them uh, budget them throughout each year and uh, being able to sell those that they conserve and um, have to buy those that they use extra. From the fourth assessment report on global climate change, from that report, this author makes some pretty specific predictions here. He outlines what the change has been between 0.4 and 0.6 degrees over the last 50 years um, in average global temperature. And then he makes a prediction that is most likely between 2100 and 2200 that uh, the sea levels will rise about 31 inches by the year 2300 and that we'll probably have um, around a 0.4 degree increase. So that's the prediction he's making. And that's that's a scary prediction because that's the prediction he's making even if we completely stabilize and don't increase our CO2 emissions at all. The third point, you know, he's talking about other natural resources. Peace, justice, and environment are all tied to limited natural resources and that's the argument that he's making. And um, he's talking about water. He basically explains how there's 11,000 desalinization plants on the planet um, within 120 nations, and that 60% of these are in the Middle East. So that tells you, you know, the Middle East is dealing with that issue now.
So, global democracy, a case made for world government in three parts, a roadmap to how we might get there. The royalties from the book go to Oxfam. I highly recommend it, and I highly recommend this idea, and I'm interested to see where this goes in the future.